I was effectively told that if I wanted to avoid jail time, then the only way to avoid it was to admit to false accounting, to theft and so on and so forth. And obviously, you know, to avoid jail time, that's what it did. So I pleaded guilty. And we now have on the line Steve Marston, a former sub postmaster who raised his case with Kevin Jones. Uh, Steve, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon to you, John. Thanks for having me on your show. Well, thank you for joining us. Steve. Can you first of all tell us your story? Well, basically, my father and myself bought the post office at Heat Bridge in Bury um, in the early 70s, 73, 74, if I remember correctly. And we run it together until my father became quite ill and I took over full time and he died in 1994. Now, in 1996, um, I got married, which was great. And we, I was actually pushed into getting the captured computer system for accounts rather than using the ledger system. Now, in the 20-odd years before then, there had been absolutely no issues whatsoever. But as soon as capture came in, effectively, it, it ended up leading to loss after loss after loss. Right, now, tell us, tell us, right, in, tell us, Steve, about the point that the post office said to you they suspected you of fraud and you were to be prosecuted. Yeah. I tried to, to cope with the problems that were going on. But it got to the stage where it was unmanageable. Now, when the post office auditors turned up and did an audit, the uh, the issue was obviously quite plain. Uh, they discovered £79,000 of losses. Now, I told them that I, I hadn't had a penny of it, which I hadn't. Yeah. And one of them quite flippantly told me that, well, you must have been sort of giving away a lot of stamps, or you must have been giving away a lot of extra money with pensions, you know, sort of along those lines. Yeah. Now, as soon as the order was completed, I wasn't allowed to stay in my own property. They took me out. I wasn't allowed to drive my own car back to our house in Blackpool. Right. I wasn't allowed to literally do anything. They took the keys off me for the building. I understand they changed the locks. They took me in the car back to the house that we just recently bought in Blackpool and watched as I went through the door to make sure it was actually where I lived. Uh, and then they drove off and then obviously went from there through solicitors and yeah. uh, so on and so forth. I mean, so far, uh, Steve, it, it mirrors in many ways the stories that we've heard from the victims of the Horizon scandal. Now, when it came to prosecution, Steve, you pleaded guilty, didn't you? Why did you plead guilty when, you, well, there was no doubt in your mind, you were an innocent man? Yeah, I wasn't really given much opportunity about that, John, purely and simply because I was effectively told that if I wanted to avoid jail time, then the only way to avoid it was to admit to false accounting, to theft and so on and so forth. And obviously, you know, to avoid jail time, that's what it did. So I pleaded guilty. Right. So again, that's an account which matches and mirrors accounts of, of I suppose, many of the so past much so the postmasters and mistresses who were dealt with so harshly by the post office, and they were using the horizon, the Fujitsu, Fujitsu system. Did you, and before it came to that, your plea of guilty in the court, and you got, a, I know, a suspended sentence. You told the post office, of course, that you were, you were innocent. Did you discuss the? Uh, the, the the accounting system that you were using and the possibility, your view, that it must be the accounting system and not you? Well, uh, this was in the very early days of computers and such like, and I just automatically assumed, well, computers can't be wrong. They must be right. And <laughs> rightly or wrongly, I just assumed that the problem must be me and that even after 20-odd years, I must be making loads and loads of mistakes. And no matter what I did... I just couldn't find where they were. And it was only later, sort of like when the Horizon business started coming along, that I realised that it isn't me, that it must be the computer system. Yes. And it sort of went from there. Well, for an innocent man, what an awful, awful experience. And, and of course, your record with the post office, you know, a long record with the post office, it includes incidents where, am I right, Steve, you confronted armed robbers and you, your bravery in doing that has been recognised. Yes, that's correct, John. On two separate occasions, armed robbers um, attempted to 
<laughs> to rob the post office with a shotgun. Um, they didn't get away with it. Armed police actually managed to to get hold of them and arrest them. It went to court and uh, they got a custodial sentence. And they, on the second occasion, many years later, um, it was two two guys came in wearing balaclavas, and I just basically run the um, sorry, press the emergency um, alarm system. Uh, picked up the phone, dialed 999. Yeah. They tailed it out of the shop, and I chased after them and tried to force the car door open to get them out, even though a gun was being waved in my face. Now, <laughs> in hindsight, that's totally stupid, but the, the, my mind was, my mindset was, well, I worked bloody hard, sorry about the language, but I worked really hard for the money that I earned, so why the hell should you walk out of here with all that money? Mm. You know, whether it's right or wrong, I don't know. Well, goodness, we don't apologise. Don't apologise. That, that, that is bravery in, in any language. And and since the conviction, how has that affected your life? I mean, so many postmasters in the Horizon scandal have suffered, well, they suffered indignity, stigma. How were you touched? Well, straight away we lost the uh, the house and the post office in, um, in Bury. The knock-on effect was that we lost our house in Blackpool that we'd bought because we really wanted to buy another business in Blackpool. Mm. Um, so that went down. We ended up living in a pokey little flat in Blackpool with no furniture, so we were sleeping on the floor with no money coming in, no nothing. Uh, forced into bankruptcy, criminal record, you know, you just name it. We basically had to move to a different part of the country because really? the stigma, the shame that we were all feeling, my wife, the kids, it was absolutely awful for them. Yes. That, that was my main consideration. We decided to relocate to another part of the country, which we went ahead and did. Well, again, that must have been a hor horrible yeah. experience. Now, Steve, in the case of the Horizon victims, their innocence was established. The The company behind the accounting system for Jitsi has accepted moral responsibility. You spoke about, about doing something to help with compensation in their cases. In your case, Steve, and Kevin Jones tells us there are others in the same boat dealing with a, a computing uh, accounting system that predates Horizon. Your innocence has not been established. How do you hope that to happen? Well, my main hope is that all this will highlight these, what has actually happened and that other people in similar situations will step forward with their stories and, you know, the issues that they've had, good or bad, and that hopefully this will sort of address this situation and bring to account people that are actually responsible for this and by doing so, Exonerate myself plus everybody else that's been involved in it. Mm. Now, we have a we've got a, a statement from the post office, which of course we asked for as you'd expect. The post office have given us this statement. I'll just read it to you, uh, Steve. It says we take very seriously the concerns that are being raised about cases from before the Horizon system was first ruled out in 1999. That obviously Steve includes you. And the post office say we will of course assist in looking into such cases brought to our attention. So that's a fairly neutral commitment on the past part of the post office isn't it you clearly want to hear more and see more done yes without any doubt because at the end of the day they've proven with horizon and so on and so forth that they're not exactly forthcoming with the uh the truth they have shown that they've been hiding a lot of things i really feel that this needs to be sort of investigated further and brought to light and by doing so to bring to justice or to bring to account the people that are actually responsible than having the situation where more and more people have been prosecuted in the belief that they were the only ones that were involved in this situation when that's clearly not the case. Steve, uh, Steve Marston, good to hear your story. Thank you so much for coming on to the show this, this evening and sharing that with us. Now, coming up, in a few minutes' time, as I say, Pinar and friends, Harry Coles, Rachel Sylvester are here. We've got a lot to talk about. We're talking about, well, the Rwanda row. We're talking about, well, an extraordinarily dark opinion poll for the for the government published today. Just one in a series, but darker, I suppose, uh, than most and much else besides. And we do want you to, to come and join us, be part of that, listen in, join in, share your thoughts. Send me a text, 8722, start with the word times or a tweet to at Times Radio. It's now 6.44, and this is Drive on Times Radio with John Pina. 